Well, Mr. Larry Goldberg, how are you doing today? Outstanding. <laughs> well, this is Good News Monday, and there's plenty to celebrate. Tesla had a really solid first, first day of the week today, and um, that could say that people are expecting a beat tomorrow. But I know you've had a strategy over time of possibly buying into the the day of the earnings call and then uh, getting out just in time. Have you decided to employ the strategy this time? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, um, Elon seems to have turned a corner in his approach to these calls. And if he maintains his record of one call, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> if he, but but uh, one call and one uh, general meet, one shareholders meeting, right? Then um, you know the risk is even if they miss, if he's upbeat, if he's um, if he um, is very um, positive about the future, if he gives the right message. The stock could go up even if they don't beat. Yeah. So it's very dangerous at this point, in my view, um, to Still mess up. around with any leaps, with any um, options. I I generally buy options when I'm fairly confident, very confident. Right, very confident. Yeah. I, hate, uh, I hate selling short. I have from time to time when it's obvious that the share is over its skis. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but for very short term. Uh -huh. And one of my best ever transactions was that uh, I <clears throat> I sold, I, I did a short sale and I strangled that with a long sale. Uh huh. And the short hit very hard. I did very well. Roll that into the long, yeah, to to grow the long, and that went through the roof. <laughs> and so the, the you know the share went down and then went and then it took yeah. off, and it was it was a great beat, and and I did extremely well. But you know those are very un those are very unusual situations, and I hate them anyway because it's a taxable event. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's um, you know. I'm not a trader by heart. Yes. I'm really not a trader by heart. And so when I trade, I feel very uncomfortable. And I only ever trade when I feel very confident of my trade. Mm -hmm. So, and and I've lost money trading. Uh -huh. you know, and back in um, 2006, 2007, I lost quite a bit of money. But I made a lot of money in 2008 by simply holding. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I sold on the 15th of September in 2008 mm. before the Bear Stearns collapse. But then I bought fairly big after then. And so that was very good. Yeah. So. All right. So um, we had a lot of confirmations and announcements the last day yeah. and a half. I'd love to get your just quick responses on these. We don't have to go into a lot of deal as much as you want. So one was the production of useful optimists into the factory in 2025 and ramp to outside customers in 2026. That was a confirmation. Uh, he kind of- I would call that Elon time. That's Elon time. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I'm skeptical as I have been for a long time. And the fact that Elon has come out with that time scale that a lot of people have been talking about, including somebody on this call. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I think it's going to take a little bit longer. I think it's going to be more of a struggle. And I think it'll be, I think they'll be a year late. Okay. All right. Which then, which is fine. It's fine. Yeah, right. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, then also announced FSD version 12.5 is being sent out to employees. We'll eliminate the sunglasses issue. It will be a one stack for the highway and the city. And it works on your cyber truck. And it's supposed to be seriously better version. I can't tell you how happy I am. <laughs> Firstly, I'll, it'll allow me to sell my X. Okay, there you go. I, you know, my X gets the early releases, and I don't, I can't, I can't not live with that. And then um, getting it on my Cybertruck, you know, I'm praying that it's in time before the next Star, Starship launch. Oh yeah, I'm going to drive to Texas at the launch. I'd love to have FSD. Particularly the new FSD. Look, 
I had a, uh, um, a neighbor from just down the street a knock on my door the other day. I had not met him before. He said, I see you have a cyber truck. I said, yeah. He said, you know, I've been invited to make my order and I really, I haven't, you know, I said, come on in. So I let him drive. I, 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 I said, take it over, you know, and we, we got in the car and he drove. He was blown away. <laughs> and then, I mean, he really was blown away. Uh, yeah, yeah. But he had all the um, the normal concerns that, you know, that Tesla Q managed to, you know, embed into these people. Oh. What about this? What about this? What about that? You know, the rust and the, and, 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 and the range and the, but, you know, I said, look, let's drive the car and you'll see it for yourself. Anyway, he loved the, the drive. He loved the, you know, he, he really felt that I, you know, helped him understand it and he was ready to go. And then I said, but have you tried FSD before? He said, no. Oh. <laughs> so I took him in my X with, you know, 12.4. And, you know, of course it did the drive absolutely effortlessly and without <laughs> intervention. And the point is that 12.4 is so normal in its driving style, so human in its driving style. He was just blown away, just blown <laughs> away. So, I mean, I'm desperate to get it for my Cybertruck. I'm so, I'm so jonesing for it in my Cybertruck that, you know, I can't wait. <laughs> so I'm hoping 12.5 will, will, will reach me soon. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I mean it really is coming out quickly. Um, yeah. I think really quickly, and so twelve point six uh, could be maybe only a month away, which be a whole nother layer. Uh, based no, on no, I I think twelve point five is still a month away. Oh, you think twelve? Even though it's going out to the employees today. Yeah, it can take a month to get out because oh. typically it goes out to the employees, and then there could be a week to five weeks delay depending on. Mm -hmm. You know what they find, what what the results are, and so on and so forth. And then twelve point six will be another two three months behind. So I would get, I would be a little bit more, uh, you know, I I would take a little bit of, I would take a little bit of caution around that. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Tesla is now able to make a vehicle in Shanghai every thirty seconds. Unbelievable. And we think that the, and we're hearing that the demand is going up in China with longer wait times. Yeah. Now we were supposed to get figures today. Did we get it? Because I, I hadn't had a chance usually, to look. Usually we get them on Tuesday, Monday night, Tuesday morning. Okay. So hopefully we'll get them tonight. And I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic, pretty optimistic. I think things are on the very, very much on the upswing. So it could be a real, you know, it could be an accelerant into tomorrow night. Yes. And I was also wondering, I asked uh, Brian White earlier today what he thought. Do you think this means that we could be looking at 30 second uh, throughputs in uh, Austin and in Berlin? In due course, in, in due course. course. I don't think we'll ever hit the 30 second, but I'm pretty confident we'll hit the 45 second. Nice. Now, the new model the so-called Model 2 or whatever it is that, they, that they're that they gearing up for, that they're setting up a line for, I think they could get there. I think that there is enough added um, capability that they could get there. So it, listen, this is not bad news. This is very, very good news. Oh, it's huge. Because if you think about the reduction in machine co machine co time, you think about the reduction in, you know, all the operating costs, Sorry, manufacturing costs. I mean, it's pretty substantial. It's a one third reduction. Yeah. One third reduction. And ninety five and ninety five percent automation to boot. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, amazing. it's amazing. Rumors are circulating that Ju Juniper might be ready by November in China. Have you uh, seen these rumors? What do you think? You know, I I've been I've been anticipating something quite early uh they said first quarter next year uh, i think we'll start seeing I, you know i'm hoping that that's true i i discount these rumors quite a lot quite a lot more than my peers tend to but i'm hoping that we'll definitely see it early in the new year yeah so um elon was just interviewed by jordan peterson and other than lex friedman 
I can't remember a better interview in terms of interesting and new subjects and all that. What do you think? I think it was better than Lex's interview. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I think it really got Elon exposed. You know, I think he 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 peeled away at least one extra layer. There, we heard some new stuff. I won't say there's nothing new. We heard some fairly new stuff, stuff we hadn't heard before. We saw Elon somewhat vulnerable when he spoke about his son. Right. Uh, the son that he lost. Um, we heard, we heard his, we heard a lot more of his um, innate um, passion. Yeah, far more than we'd heard from Lex. You know, he tends to be very passionless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He speaks passionately, but only, but you you get the sense that he's reciting that passion you don't you know you get the sense that he's fairly robotic he's he's telling you what he's thinking but he's not he's not letting the thinking talk this time he began to let the thinking talk i thought uh -huh. Uh -huh. um you know jordan's not a great interviewer because he tends to really jump in and you know <laughs> And and take control and really expound his own right right. <laughs> so it would be you know a lot better, but but he managed to get he managed to draw Elon out in a in a way nobody else has. So on balance, I would rate this as an outstanding interview because it went on for a while, and you know you had to be really interested. Yeah, um, yeah. but it was I thought it was very good. Yeah, I mean, I think you're 100 percent right. Jordan needs to give a little more air. A little. He he doesn't like dead air. I don't either. It's really something I've had to discipline myself when I'm interviewing people is to allow that dead air. But uh, Jordan hates it, and so he just jumps in. Plus, he likes to um, he likes to pontificate. And uh, you know, if I were, I'd love to see Jordan pull back on that a little bit too, and let the folks let the folks speak more. But, yeah, um, but what he does is he tends to talk over his um, interviewee, and that you know that really detracts from from the from the experience. Lex is so good at you know just allowing that space and allowing his interview, but what Jordan did is engage Elon in a in a to a, a degree that I haven't seen him engaged before. Yeah, I think that's his therapist uh, background. You know, he he at least has that uh, the setup, the ability to do the setup and to listen carefully to the response in a way that allows him to then to go to the next level, uh, you know, based on what's been said. But but Lex is good at that, too. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I would say that I saw any evidence of his therapist background, uh, you know, because he never he never he didn't so much as listen he didn't listen to Elon in a very, um, you, you know, in a patient way. He impatiently drove Elon, right? And sometimes, you know, lectured Elon. Yeah, right. <laughs> like it was, it was very interesting. If you're interested in in him in general, you know, I I've tried to read his books before, and it's it's heavy going, <laughs> very heavy going. I'm I'm talking about Jordan. Yeah, yeah. But I was very interested to hear Elon talk about the biography that, uh, you, you know, uh, yeah. uh, Walter Isaacson's biography and, and Elon's view on that biography, because I suspect he's now read the biography. <laughs> well, whether he read it or not, he just said, listen, I would have told it differently. And that's always going to be true. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's always going to be true. OK, so then Elon says that XAI, Grok, he said in the interview. Grok 3.0, I think it was 3.0, right? In December? Am I behind? 2.0 in December, 3.0 next year. Yeah. Okay. So 3.0. We've got Grok 1.0 right now. We're going to get 2.0 in December. In uh, 2.5, I thought. 2.5. Anyway, there's going to be a new one out next month. 
Yeah, and uh, that will be two. Yeah, that'll be two, and then three maybe in December. Maybe you're right. Three in seems, December seems doesn't seem incredible. <laughs> yeah. He says it will be better than Open AI four in December. It is an interesting question. Uh, we I was in a debate on Friday about what constitutes better. You know, they have these benchmarks, and now they're training to those benchmarks. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> So of course they are. <laughs> yeah, and so it's very hard to really explain. And the benchmarks themselves somewhat artificial, and it's very difficult to tell uh, quality from those benchmarks because there's, you know, you take Gemini that is so that was so uh, that was so badly was launched and it was so bad abysmally abysmally, you know. Uh, woke, if for the want of a better expression, but it was so abysmally woke. It scored very well. Yeah, on yeah. The benchmarks. <laughs> yeah. So I thought the most telling moment of the entire interview, and the the one thing that was completely maybe new, a new way of looking at these uh, these chat these um, large language models, was the Ehrlichman idea that if these if these um, computers were trained on Ehrlichman's theories. In other words, and Ehrlichman's in the, uh, you know, his books are in the, uh, in the internet. internet. So there's training that's gonna take place off of Ehrlichman who was completely wrong on every level that, oh my gosh, if we're gonna train on that, what are we gonna end up with? So I thought that was a, that was an amusing way of looking at it, I thought. Yeah, but that's not how it works. Um, the, the, the model does not use the logic embedded in a book. You know, the logic, the model uses the next best word right. embedded in the book. Right. So the idea is, you know, you can refer to the Ehrlichman book and ask it to reproduce those ideas, and it will actually go and search that passage and do that. But it's not really driven by that as an, by the ideas as expressed in the book. Um, so you have to be a little cautious about saying, well, if it's trained upon, I don't know, Mein Kampf may have been read. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And, and would it have an anti-Semitic right. viewpoint? And I don't think it would really. Um, I, I, you know, so it's a, it's an open issue. It's a lot more complex than it sounds like. You know, oh, it's trained on this book. It's trained with this book in my with this book incorporated in the corpus. Right. Therefore, it'll have those bad ideas. I don't think it works like that at all. Hmm. Interesting. So how does it, if I ask it the question, will the U.S. population outstrip its ability to maintain itself with uh, raw materials uh, available today? It'll look at multiple different um, sources. Uh, mainly uh, uh, scientific studies. Um, of which, you know, the he's called it Ehrlichman. It's, it's not Ehrlichman. It's, um, the hell is the name of it? Um, but, but that will be a very small part of the corpus, one book, you know. Uh -huh. So it'll look for those concepts and it'll find those concepts because it'll have the string of words and look for the next best word. And it may find uh, the compass, the concept of overpopulation, and it may even mention it, but I think on balance, it would, it would tend to um, find the, the most common or the most current theory. Right. So, yeah, interesting. So, so no, overpopulation is not a current theory, not a scientific theory anymore. Not a scientific theory anymore. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying it would go to more current information. Yeah. Um, and so, um, what about the idea of citation? And I don't mean in the formal sense. Will if if Ehrlichman was cited? You keep calling him Ehrlichman. It's not Ehrlichman, right? Not right. I'm getting it wrong. What's yeah? The, what was the name of the, the late great pan? No, late great. Planet Earth. Yeah, he's not. He's not late. He's he's, he's still alive. But um, uh, 
it definitely starts with ER, but I forget it's not early. <laughs> they'll probably uh, know, they'll probably let us know. Fifteen. Paul. Paul. Uh, uh, I no. <laughs> Oh, late great planet Earth. Oh, the book. Lindsay, Lindsay, Hal Lindsay. No. But, was... but I don't think that's the one we're talking about. So that's not, it's, is that the right book? No, I don't think so. But anyway, I but, understand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was a guy who said that we would have we would definitely run out of all the resources and he made yeah. the ten thousand. His first name was definitely Paul and it sounded a little uh, anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Contra, you know, Ehrlich, Ehrlich. Just early. Paul, Paul Ehrlich. Ehrlich. Uh, the population bomb. The population bomb. That's the one. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got we got the wrong the wrong I never guy. read that book. I, I managed to miss that particular excitement because I had a deep skepticism. I see. That, okay. <laughs> I read it, but I had a deep skepticism, and I still had a deep skepticism when I got done. Um, okay, so let's see. Where were we? We were on that. Let's see. The market today seems to have completely negated the rotation theory, <laughs> at least for the last three days. Um, maybe taking the broadening out theory with it. <laughs> Bank of America says you need 10-year treasuries under 4%. And yeah. manufacturing PMI above 50 to get the small caps involved, neither of which are true. Right. So after the last three days, do you think the rotation is still plausible until we get to those levels that B of A points out? The PMI comes out tomorrow, so we'll get that number. We're not going to get a rotation if there's a, a recession. Ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. We're not going to get a rotation. I mean, if we assume that countries headed towards a downturn uh -huh. as I think we are between the two of us uh, then we're not going to get a rotation the you know the magnificent six or seven whichever they happen to be are fairly recession proof uh -huh. because Tesla's not but the others are um, they're fairly recession proof and if not recession proof they can certainly take steps to avoid they may not grow as fast, but they right. certainly avoid, you know, any problems. Um, yeah, and 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 so I don't, I don't, I don't believe in this rotation. I haven't believed in the rotation. Oh. I remain fairly steadfast in my conviction of the stocks that I own. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. I very seldom change my investment thesis. The only time I really changed my investment thesis was at the height of the pandemic. I just thought the stocks had gone too crazy. Yeah, and I already yeah. sold pretty much everything except for Tesla. It's <laughs> taken me a long time to get back into the stocks. But but um, yeah, I, I don't believe in rotation. Okay. So then my 5% pullback was true, but it didn't last a minute. Yeah, <laughs> Not so far. Do you yeah. think that we're up and to the right for the rest of the year, or do you think there's going to be another kind of correction at some point? Yeah, I, I think we're going to continue to drift. I think it's really hard to see. Look, there very shortly within the month or two, there's going to be a reduction in interest rate. Right. The Federal Reserve is going to reduce interest rates. There's going to be a pop. Will it affect the Magnificent Seven? Not as much as it'll affect the rest of the market. Right. But it won't be a rotation. It'll be a general relief for the, you know, for these stocks that have not really done well. So more of a broadening out. Broadening out. Okay. Um, but then, you know, if, if that doesn't alleviate the downtrend and we continue into the recession, there's going to have to be another pop. There's going to have to be another... and. It's going to be that long, slow climb out of the recession. So you're right. I mean, we have to get interest rates really down in order to see a rotation. And that could well come at the end of the cycle of the recession. GDP is uh, projected at 1.9 this Wednesday, I think it is. And PCE is projected to be down just a tad. Uh, compared to uh, last month, which was already down. 
Yeah. Um, you, uh, you, uh, yeah. I predict uh, GDP will be a shade low, will be low. Okay. I don't know about a shade. It'll be low. It'll be lower than expectation. Okay. And I think PCE will be higher than expectation. Higher than expectations. Okay. Interesting. All right. I mean, significantly or just a... a no, note? Dan. Yeah, okay. just, I don't think... You know, these figures are... So, they're so crazy. We measure them to the decimal point. And, right. uh, you know, we're measuring... We're not measuring anything exact when we... Publishing it to a decimal point is so crazy. Well, of course, the PCE is is built largely on some of the same numbers as the CPI and the PPI. So we have some, you know, pretty good way to look at that. But the GDP can always be a big surprise. And in fact, it usually is a big surprise to the Fed. <laughs> their, their projection is usually off by a ton. But uh, yeah. we'll we'll see what happens this Wednesday. Um, I know you've said that we're in a rolling recession, um, but there's a lot of evidence that the consumer is out of money. What is going to keep this economy going? What is going to keep this this rally going up and to the right? If the federal consumer... government's going to try and spend as much as it can as quickly as it can, it's going to hire as many people as they can. I see. I mean, the federal government is now almost a extension of the democratic party yeah yeah it's become party political it's going to to use every scrap of authority it's got to hire um you know we we heard today that the secret service is eight thousand people large eight thousand oh. people and what's the pointy end of that spear about a thousand people. Yeah, eight thousand people to support eight a thousand people. Well, the now, other I seven, don't. No, the other, other seven thousand is the DEI department. You know, <laughs> look, they they have a huge DEI, you know, focus, but because of their, you know, their, you know, that's their, that's one of the missions that they've got. But that was a hearing today, but that reflects the way it is in the rest of the federal government. Yeah, of course. Every 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 uh, bureaucracy, uh, and, even Elon, you know, he did his 15, 14% cuts because the bureaucracy had to be cut back. Yeah. And every one of these laws that we get, you know, become permanent and then they get laid with another law and then laid with another law. And and each law that we get, you know, the bureaucracy actually generates the Rules. Look, this is not a political program. I don't want to get political about it, but all I can say is that it's manifest that the federal government acts in support of, you know, this particular administration and this expenditure. The, the expenditure is going to be very significant, very, very significant. Well, okay, and with the end of the year. Yep. So without getting political, and we're going to talk about politics, but again, politics impacts economics. So Kamala looks to be the standard bearer. Yeah. And without going too partisan on it, how do you think this impacts the race? And if she is victorious, how is it going to impact your thinking about the economy in 2025 and beyond? Look. No. Kamala has no record at the federal level. Seriously. Um, she has a record in California as a pretty tough prosecutor. I mean, she was she was before this latest, you know, crop of prosecutors that don't believe in prosecuting the law. Right. She was tough. Um, but she's un, you know, she has no experience at the federal level. No legal. Precious little experience at the federal level. Um, I think it's going to be very hard for her, and she's going to be, you know, guided by the bureaucracy that's that this government has built, and that many of the governments before it has built. You know, the Obama administration and even the Bush administration, the so-called permanent government. So I think it's going to be more of the same, pretty much more of the same. So do you, what do you think about uh, November, uh, the, the election day? Do you think that she has 
a better chance than Biden did, which I think we would have both agreed was almost zero at that point? No, I think, you know, we're seeing a new Trump. Yeah. I don't know how real it is, but if this is if this new Trump is real, you know, I'm I'm prepared to vote for him, and that's that's a, <laughs> that's a revolution because I was an absolute anti-Trump. I was, you know, so and so. I think that he's going to win a very significant by a very significant margin. I hope we're going to see the new Trump continue. I, I hope we're going to see a thought a more thoughtful. Uh, less visceral uh, president. I hope that he surrounds himself with good people rather than you know this crazy group of people he gathered. Boy, he's got some good folks to choose from now. He's got you know some of these s stars from uh, Silicon Valley that are now in his camp. Uh, that he yeah, uh, but the stars from Silicon Valley are not great stars at administering you know a massive government. So. I, I would take that with a pinch of salt. It's going to be very hard. Look, Reagan tried to implement a revolution, mm -hmm. and he had difficulty, and he had eight years of governorship behind him. Was it eight years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. eight years. Governorship. Eight years of governorship of the largest state in the union. So he he was blooded. Trump has 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 run an administration before, but he ran it chaotically. Would he run it better this time? I don't know. You know, one of the, you know, it's, it's an, it's tough because we don't have great people at the top to choose from, and we have a sclerotic government. We have, you know, all these massive, gigantic federal agencies that are so sclerotic. And we have this massive amount of, you know, federal regulation on the book. It's going to take a, a genius to solve this and fix it. And Trump is not that genius. So Vivek has got to be the guy who goes in and takes care of all starting to get rid of that bureaucracy. <laughs> it's possible. You know, Vivek would be, uh, a, you know, interesting uh, alternative. Um, I just don't want him to have his hands on foreign policy. I think that would okay, be all right. catastrophic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's possible. Look, anything's possible. Sure. I mean, it's a choice between, I think, bad and worst. <laughs> worse. And so I'd rather have bad than worse. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, let's take a and let, Oh, wait, before I look at the market. Are there any things I left out, things about uh, Tesla? Well, we do have earnings tomorrow. Wait, your earnings, oh my goodness. I hope people waited. I'm going to put that at the top of the page so people know that they should watch that. We can make a separate, uh, separate, separate. video. Yeah, I'll make a short version with just the uh, earnings. Yeah, you know, let's look at- We talked about project. your earnings a week ago, but let's take another look. Yeah, I mean, this is, I, I haven't changed my view. Mm -hmm. Um. Can I share this? Is it shared? Can you see yeah, it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, here we go. Um, coming up. There we go. Yep. And so I haven't really changed my view, honestly, from where we were. Okay. Um, I I still have 64 cents. You see that at the bottom here. And there, I'm sorry. On gap. That, and that is bef that's after taking out the uh, one-time charge? No, I have not removed the one-time charge. This is $0.64 cents before taking removing the one-time charge. Okay, so that would add about $0.13 cents or something like that. Yes, yeah, so it's 500 over 3,500 shares. So that is um, $0.13, cents. $0.13, cents, $0.14, $0.14. Cents, yep. cents. Okay. So that, that could take us to, you know, $0.78 uh, okay. if you take out the one-time charge. So, you know, it's... It's not a bad quarter. I would say it's a very good quarter. Um, you know, I'm looking for an increase in automotive, uh, both in gross margin and in average price. Okay. I'm looking for a pretty good, this is where I could be out by a couple of hundred thousand. I'm looking for 500 million in regulatory uh, okay. income. I'm looking for energy at $3.75 billion, okay. which is a huge increase. It's more right. than double last year huh? 
and I'm looking for services uh, at a big hike at 2600. This is this is the most sus of my numbers. I see. Okay, <laughs> but I'm looking for this very big increase for actually quite a lot of reasons, and we'll see if I'm right this time. I, I, you know, I've been looking for this hike in in uh, services numbers for a while now, but it, it's because of the big increase in the energy rates we're charging and for services around um um and and for the there's something else that we're charging extra for anyway bottom uh, bottom line is i'm looking for a big increase in services charges and that could be i could be vulnerable on that anyway i'm at you know 27 billion which is a big increase from last year Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking that the that the services thing keeps getting bogged down by the expenses of the the capex that's going into everything, into the service centers, into the stations, the the uh, charging stations, uh, into uh, you know all the lobbyists they must be hiring to get these insurance things done. Uh, they've got they've got to have a lot of upfront on all of these to. Uh, yeah, but but I'm I'm looking at a big hike in revenues and services. revenues. I see, just in revenues. Okay. Yeah, big hike in revenues. All right. I think that's the that's the most you know that's that's the biggest. Um... Well, you're not you're not very far out of line from a lot of other folks. The 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 I think the street is at around sixty two, right, or something like that. And yeah, other people are at fifty nine to sixty two, sixty three. Yeah. Yeah. Seems, seems to be a lot of folks gathered around that one, uh, that that uh, that pro that uh, earnings level. So if you look at my um, my gross profit margins, a uh, slight improvement in GP from last uh, from the previous quarter because I looked at the average prices. I think they've improved a little. I think our costs improved a little bit. So pretty comfortable. We'll hit that nineteen percent. Okay. Uh, hopeful. Mm -hmm. Energy uh, is going to stay at about the same percentage. Okay. Um, now that does not take into account the pretty big back end opportunity sure. from the services from the, from the recognition of performance. Right. But that kind of builds over time. There's a little bit of recovery from performance from prior quarter, um, and then. Services is a big hike. It's almost a ninety million dollar increase. Yeah, and then uh, Brian Wong did a video today earlier. He and I did a video earlier today where he is expecting to start to see a little higher revenue, which I'm assuming will be in the auto number of a higher take rate on FSD, both on purchases and subscriptions. Yeah, that's baked into my uh, average selling price. I didn't break that out, okay. uh, right. but that's the reason that you know the the uh, gross margin is remaining pretty robust. In fact, it's increased. Do you see that increase there? Oh yeah, eighteen point five to nineteen. Right, right, right. That point five percent is you know a fairly significant increase. Um, it could be that it. You know, if I'm wrong on my uh, regulatory credits, that that FSD could make up for it. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I think we'll hit this five billion in in gross margin. Mm -hmm. R and D. Um, I actually show an increase in R and D despite the layoffs. Ah. Um, and I do allow for five hundred million in restructuring. So I feel I've got a very good, uh, yeah, a good cushion. Yeah, and my SGNA falls from thirteen seventy four to eleven twenty. So some of the layoffs, the bulk of the layoffs, happen in the SGNA line rather than the R and D line. Okay, and then of course the beautiful part about that is that next quarter we'll get that thirteen cents. Yeah, um, and, yeah. 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 So that'll be nice. Yeah. All right. Good, Larry. Thank you for that. Let's, let's see. I'm glad that you reminded me. <laughs> so let's uh, take a look at where Tesla is. So Tesla got up uh, $5. I'm sorry, 5% today. 
which was uh, $12.31, closed the day at $251.51, but in the after, whoops, nope, it's, I, was, I saw it earlier, it was up like a buck plus, but now it's only up two cents. So, um, but a good day overall. The Dow was up 128, NASDAQ up 280, S&P up 60, Magnificent 7 was mixed. We had Apple and Amazon down, but the rest were up. Uh, and NVIDIA had a particularly strong day, up 561. Um, and the Kathy Woods were all up, and strongly. Kathy Woods had a very good day today. So if there's any rotation at all, it might be just into the Kathy Woods. Maybe that's what it's going <laughs> to all right, so let's let's uh, let's look behind the behind the door uh, at the uh, bonds. So uh, we're sitting at four twenty five. I'm sad to say, I, that's my that's the that's my breaking number. I wanted to stay under four twenty five. So the ten year though is sitting right on four point two five three. Actually, uh, the two year four point five one nine. So we are back in the 26 basis points area. So floating back and forth now in the 23 to 29, eh, back and forth. Back. The two month is actually up in the in the uh, in the pre market to five three eight four, way over 100 basis points. Wow. Yeah. So the inversion is inverted. <laughs> so we earlier today saw oil coming down. Right now, it's unless the, my thing is unless this computer is wrong, the the oil is unchanged in the pre market, but it's under eighty for Texas Intermediate. Yeah, but oil is going to come under pressure because um, Russia is really losing oil assets at a alarming rate in this war. Ah, Ukraine are bombing a lot of their refineries, and uh, they're going to. I mean. I guess that means they'll probably dump a lot of crude onto the market. So maybe it'd be very good for oil. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Whatever it is right now, it's under 80, which is the first time in a long time, months and months and months since it's been under 80. That's on Texas. And then on Brent, it's at 8240, getting close to the normal $3 spread. But uh, yeah. surprisingly, with all the stuff going on with the Houthis and all that, uh, the the Brent is not showing a differential uh, like it was a, a few weeks ago. Natural gas yeah. down, natural gas down 0.36 um, in the pre-market at 224, kind of in the middle of its range. Gold um, up another dollar seventy, but it had gold is having a run and a half. <laughs> yeah, it came down. It was like a twenty four something. I forget what the yeah. high was. But it's back down to 2396, but still it's it hit the high. It hit the high earlier this week or late last week. I think it hit it uh, Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, 24 something. Silver has managed to come under 30 and stay under 30. So it's not it is not it's still doing very well, but not like gold has done. And then your buddy copper. <laughs> copper is thinking about going under four. It's at 419 now, down in the uh, down in the pre-market. Global recession. A global recession. That's what we're talking about, right? All right. Dollar. The up uh, up against the, the yen, still no intervention by the Japanese, mm. and unchanged against the euro, and really no real change against the yen. It's both, in fact, both of them have now changed to unchanged. They've changed to unchanged. Hmm. <laughs> so Bitcoin. But you know, the yen, the yen is a long term short. Oh. You know, I think I don't know if you followed the calculus that Elon did today. Yeah. But he said basically, if you look at the total birth, the total number of people born in a year, yes. then if you look 50 years time, that will be you know, the predictive population. size of the population. I mean, there are already, you know, 8 million homes unoccupied in Eight Japan. 8 million. 8 million. That's what I read. Wow. Yeah, their houses are half of what they were valued uh, 30 years ago. Because there's so many that are unoccupied. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They have, they have ghost cities in, in Japan. Oh. But it's, it's not just Japan. It's South Korea. It's Russia. 
It's South both- Korea is actually worse than Japan. Yeah. yeah. Well, Russia, yeah, Russia is a whole different ball game because Russia never had enough housing in the first place. It's not like the you know developed world. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's really we have no idea how lucky and how good we have it here. <laughs> and in Europe. And in Europe. Yeah, no, the immig- good, smart immigration makes total sense. And it yeah. will be it will be the mainstay of the United States while these other uh, governments are not going to be able to, unless they decide to find a way to appeal to high quality immigrants, it's the game over. Yeah. Um, okay. And then finally, we've got the equities. We have got the Dow. Actually, we've got uh, a little sell-off here in the pre-market. Dow down 16, our 0.04. S&P down 550 or 0.1 and then NASDAQ down 45 or 0.22. So a little bit of a pullback from today's fun. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the morning. Uh, so is Tesla going to continue to run up into the meeting or will people start uh, with a 12 point? I think there'll be some pretty big sales. Tomorrow. Uh, the hedging sales in the morning uh uh and into the meeting um and then you know if elon comes in good spirit who knows <laughs> all right larry well thank you for all of that and for those of you who have yet to watch larry's bio the other day which i thought was genius oh i'm sorry it wasn't it wasn't the interview that was genius it was listening to larry's tell his stories You definitely, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to put the card right up here so you can go find out what happened to Larry. Why is he the way he is today? It was embarrassing. (laughs) It was embarrassing. (laughs) It was great. All right, Larry, thank you again for coming on. And we will uh, look forward to talking to you Friday um, and we'll see what happened all week uh, to make, make us go crazy. All right. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.